Hi everyone, I'm Tina, your host. Welcome to Meta Ideas. Thank you so much for joining me for the second tutorial about how to use a 3D inflate effect on Adobe Illustrator. In this new tutorial, I will show you how to add cute images to your 3D inflated graphics. Firstly, I will show you which images you need to get, then I will show you how to apply the inflate effect and modify the colors to your pleasing, and towards the end of this video, I will give you some suggestions on how to save your graphics. Plus stay tuned until the end if you want some bonus tips that will be especially useful for those of you that want to create the 3D inflated puffy bubble tumble wraps that are taking Etsy by storm. Having said all this, let's get started. First thing first, let's go ahead and open Adobe Illustrator and create a new file. So let's go to File, New, and set our sizes. I will set my sizing to 200 pixel by 200 pixel. This is because this kind of graphics will take a lot of computing power and I'm only working on a laptop. If you got a better computer, please go ahead and try with 500 pixel by 500 pixel, or you might even be able to use 1000 by 1000. What I usually do is save everything as an SVG file so that I can scale it up afterwards. The other setting that I have here is RGB color and high 300 ppi. When you're ready, press create. Okay, now that we've created our artboard, let's go ahead and import our cute graphics. I have here two different types of graphics that I'm going to show you. By the way, I got these graphics on Creative Fabrica and I will leave a link down below because these graphics were completely free, so you might want to go and have a look. Okay, so these are the two types of SVG files that you can find on Creative Fabrica or anywhere else. And I'm showing you because the only type that we can use for this kind of application is the one on the left. As you can see, if I drag my mouse over it, you can select all the different parts of this SVG file. While with this one, it looks like the image has been flattened first and then saved as an SVG file. It's a great image and it's super cute, but unfortunately we cannot use this type of image for the inflated 3D graphics that we are gonna to make today. So bye bye little ducky, I'll see you another time. So now let's go ahead and select the image and reduce the size a little bit. Let's right click and cut it and then paste it in our artboard. As you can see, it's quite big. So let's go ahead and reduce it by pressing the shift key. I love this graphic, it's so cute. All right, so we got our first graphic. If we want, we can add some more elements like a little star. So I'm gonna press here on the star tool. It might appear as a rectangle to you. In that case, you just right click on it and you're gonna have all the selections. Drag your mouse across your artboard that we can move it around by using the selection tool up here. And we can rotate it a bit as we please. We can change the color by clicking on it and then double clicking on the color tool down here. And I'm gonna go ahead and give it a nice shade of pink. And then I'm gonna go ahead and also add a little heart to it. This is another SVG file that you can find on Creative Fabrica, or sometimes you can even find some SVG files, like simple one like this one on, you know, free platform online. Alternatively, I can show you next time if you like, just let me know in the comment below if you'd like me to show you how to create a heart shape just here on Adobe Illustrator because it's actually very easy. Okay, now that I have placed all my elements, I'm just gonna go ahead and quickly change the colors. So I'm gonna click on the first heart and then the second heart by also pressing the shift key at the same time and double clicking on the color tool. Gonna choose another shade of pink, I think. Let's keep it all pink. I'm gonna reduce this one a bit. And you really, you know, take your time with this. I'm quickly gonna go ahead and change the color of the bandana. So as you can see, I select everything, then right click and ungroup. Then I click on the bandana area, right click and ungroup again. Then select one of the section of the bandanas. As you can see, we can see the color right here on the left on the color tool, double click and choose a nice shade of pink, pinkish. And then I'm gonna go ahead and do the same for this 
area here of the bandana. So in order to keep the same shade of purple, what you can do is using the eyedropper tool, selecting the color, and by pressing the O key, left click on the areas that you wanna color. I think I'm gonna go ahead and change the color of the wheels as well. I'm gonna then select the blue area and a quick trick, if you wanna select multiple areas of your artboard that have the same color, is by clicking on one, then going on select, same, fill and stroke, and as you can see, it automatically selected both wheels, and then you can press on the color tool again and choose a different shade. I'm gonna go with purple. And the last thing that I'm gonna do is changing the color of the ear and of the tongue because they're a little bit too red for me. Now that we are done, we can select everything on our artboard, right click and press group. You can go to the shape tool, right click and press on rectangle, then create a square that covers the entire artboard by pressing the shift key. Right click on the square, go to arrange and send to back. Then you can drag your mouse across and select everything again, right click and group. And now the fun part of applying the 3D inflated effect. To do so, go to Effect at the top, press on 3D Materials, and Inflate. And you will see the image starts changing straight away. Now we can play with the materials and the lighting to give it a bit of a better effect, and also get rid of this shading, which in my opinion is a bit too much. Make sure to select everything, then you go Material, the full material and then down here you can put roughness to zero and the metallic effect to about 0.3 and you can see the image is already changing then i'm gonna go on lighting i'm gonna leave the standard for this image i'm gonna select everything leave standard and just change the height to about 65 and see what we get I really like this effect. As you can see, there is still quite a bit of shading. So what I'm gonna do is select everything and put the height degree to a higher number, about 80. And I'm really pleased with this effect. So try, experiment with you know, your creation, see what works best for you. Um, every image will have different results and you can also see how it really changes between an image that has got a dark outline and an image that doesn't. I would suggest if you do things like thumbnail wraps, like the one that you can see on Etsy, um, have a look at the one that are like very popular and you will notice that not many images have the outline, so it might be a good idea for you to choose SVG files that don't have an outline or it can be a bit difficult. So what you could do instead is decide to change the outline color to a color that's a bit more similar to the background that you choose. Or in this case, you could have made the background a bit darker. I actually really like the effect that it gives to this image in particular, but it's totally up to you. Everything can be changed. Um, any kind of change that you make to intensity, rotation will give you different effects. So please go ahead and experiment. However, I'm happy with this, especially for this tutorial. So I select everything again, go to the drop down menu here, select ray tracing, medium, and I have ticked here already, reduce noise, and I'm gonna go ahead and render. As you can see, it's super shiny. I really love the effect and it's totally up to you how you wanted to make it look. For example, if I did select it again, and go on material. I could put the roughness up to one and you will see that all the shininess go, goes away and it gives them more like of a, I don't know, almost a powdery effect. Or for example, you could select everything. Once again on material, go down and not only put the roughness to one, but you could put the metallic effect to zero. And I really love this effect as well. So, Select everything again, and you could do the exact opposite and pull the metallic effect up. 
and then go ahead and change the roughness to zero. And you can see how it really looks more like metal now. The sky is the limit, guys. It's really up to you what you want to do. I really love the effect that we created earlier. So I'm going to go back to that, which was roughness zero and metallic effect to 0 0.3. And I'm going to render it again. Here we go. So now for saving, I would highly suggest you save it as a SVG file so you can upscale it, especially if you worked with a small image like I have. So go on file and then you go export, export as. And here you can choose the SVG file. It might not be the first option. So it could be like you have PNG, but you can just go down and choose SVG, give it a name. I'm gonna call it cute pink doggo and save it on my folder here that I already have selected and press export and then okay. Now let's go and open the same file in Photoshop and I can show you how it upscales perfectly because we saved it as an SVG file. So we can go here and go file new. I'm going to set the pixel to 1000 by 1000. Oops. And the DPI to 300. Uh, RBG color and transparent background and click create. And now I can just reduce this page and go and grab this image from my folder. and drag it in. So as you can see, we have the image here and we can drop it in. And here we go, we have an image that we created as 200 by 200 that upscale perfectly. And I'm actually gonna go ahead and upscale it even further. As you can see, the image is perfect even now that we upscaled it because we saved it as a SVG. So it's very important for you to do so. And now my last tip for those of you that want to create those cute Tumblr wraps that are taking acid by storm. So I want to show you one Tumblr wrap that I have created for this tutorial, which is this one. And I want to show you something here at the edges. I think it's important to get rid of some of the shading here. Otherwise, when people will create your Tumblr wrap or when you will, you will have quite a bit of a line in between the two sides when they join. So instead of creating 9.3 by 8.2 artboard, what I've been doing with my Tumblr wraps is to create a slightly larger artboard. And then what I do is import the final image into Adobe Photoshop and trim the sides so it will fit in 9.3 by 8.2. But in doing so, I get rid of this area here, which yes, is nice because it's all puffy when it's like this flat, but once you make an actual Tumblr wrap, this will leave a very strong line all down the middle of the join. So, I prefer with my Tumblr wraps to just keep it a bit smaller. So I created it like this, but with a 9.5 or 10 by 8.2. And as I said, import it into Adobe Photoshop and just cut the edges a little bit. This is just a quick tip and something that I've noticed when I created my last few Tumblr wraps. And yeah, I thought I'd let you know. Anyway, I feel like I've been speaking way too much today, so I'll let you go. Thank you so much if you stayed with me up until the end. I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I hope to see you soon for the next. I'm planning to make a tutorial about how to add text to your 3D inflated effect graphics. And I really hope you'll join me for that one as well because you can really create some cute effects with that too. That's all for today. Thank you so much for watching this video and I'll see you soon again. Bye.